saying what's up guys. Today, I'll show you a horror episode. Imprint, Masters of Horror. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with an American journalist, Christopher, visiting a remote island in Japan. He rides a boat in the middle of the night with some Japanese laborers to get to the island. His fellow passengers tease him about liking Japanese women, but Christopher just stays silent. Their boat bumps into a floating corpse of a pregnant woman. The man rowing comments that the woman is just the latest dead body from the island. This particular island is famous for being a den of prostitutes and their masters. The laborers, who came with Christopher, all eagerly inspect the available women, while he carefully checks each cage for the one woman he is looking for. Sadly, she is not there. Other women try to get his hormone attention, but Christopher remains stoic. He does notice one prostitute, who is shrouded in shadows. A disabled touter approaches Christopher, and urges him to pick a girl already. He then explains that he is looking for a girl named Komomo, but the touter doesn't recall a prostitute on the island with that name. Dismayed, Christopher says he'll be leaving, but the touter informs him that no boat will be returning to the mainland until morning. Since he has nowhere else to go, the touter convinces Christopher to stay in one of his rooms and be in the company of a prostitute. His face still unreadable, Christopher tells the touter that he wants the girl in the shadows. Christopher is taken to his lodgings and served with sake. He reminisces about his lost love, Komomo. She was a beautiful Japanese girl who fell in love with Christopher. He loved her too, but he had to leave her behind when he came home to America. After he left, Komomo was sold into prostitution, and Christopher has spent years trying to find her. A while later, the girl Christopher selected softly pads into the room. For the first time, he can finally see her face. It dawns on him why she is kept hidden in the back of the room. The entire right side of her face is marred with a birth defect. She comes closer to him, and shares that lost souls reach out to touch her. She then shrieks, and says that the souls are there with them in the room. Christopher looks behind him, but sees nothing. The disfigured girl calms down, and shares that she has been cursed since birth, with a connection to the dead. He asks her about his lover Komomo, and she in turn, asks him what he plans to do with her. With his lips loosened by the sake, Christopher divulges that he wants to take Komomo to America and give her a better life. The disfigured girl's face saddens, and she begins to tell him about the tragic tale of Komomo. She died six months after coming to the brothel. She hung herself because her heart was broken after her lover didn't come for her. Christopher doesn't take the news well, and he curses himself for taking too long to return to his love. He is about to leave, when the disfigured girl begs him not to for his safety, since the island is not in the human realm but is filled with demons. This alludes to the fact that Christopher, knowingly or unknowingly, traps himself in a room where he has to face his personal demons. A disfigured girl tries to calm him down, and leads him back to the room. Christopher drunkenly confesses that Komomo had reminded him of his dead sister. Then he lies down on a mat, while the disfigured girl takes care of him. A few hours later, Christopher wakes up, with the disfigured girl fanning him. He asks her why she's still awake, and she answers that it's a disgrace in her trade if she sleeps, while a client is in the same room. Suddenly, he sees a ghost creeping up behind her, that it disappears instantly. Christopher rationalizes that it's just for the sake of playing tricks on his mind. The disfigured girl offers herself to Christopher, but he refuses. He explains that he does find her beautiful, but he's just not in the right frame of mind to sleep with anyone. Mollified, the disfigured girl urges him to sleep. He asks her to tell him a bedtime story. She begins to tell him about her past. The disfigured girl was born in a poor village, nestled deep in the mountains. Her mother was a midwife, and her father was sickly. She was born with her deformity, and this caused her to be ostracized in the village. All alone while growing up, she befriended a Buddhist monk, who told her about the perils of hell for sinners. Her father eventually succumbed to his illness, and her mother sold her into prostitution. Years later, she met Komomo in the brothel. The disfigured girl was not able to attract clients like the other prostitutes, so the madam didn't feed her until she got one. Komomo was the only one on the island who showed her kindness, so the two became friends. She told the disfigured girl about her American lover, and how he will someday take her away from this hellish place. The other girls mocked Komomo for being idealistic and believing she was a princess, when the truth was that her biological family killed themselves, and she was sold by her foster parents. The disfigured girl defended Komomo, and threatened the mean prostitutes. Komomo quickly became popular among the brothel's patrons. The other prostitutes resented her for this. One day, the madam's valuable jade ring disappeared. The other girls framed Komomo, by leaving her hairpin at the scene of the crime. The madam ordered her to be tortured, and Komomo suffered greatly. 
The torturer burned her underarms, and stuck pins into her gums and under her fingernails. Kamomo was then hung upside down. Not able to withstand the pain anymore, Kamomo confessed to stealing the ring, but did not know where it is. The torture continued, but they could never find the ring. Kamomo's spirit was broken, and she hung herself eventually. In the present, Christopher does not accept the disfigured girl's story. He begs her to tell him the truth. She tells him that sometimes it's better to believe a lie. But Christopher is insistent that he gets to know what really happened. So the disfigured girl tells him the details she omitted in the first version. It turns out that she had stolen the madam's jade ring, and Komomo saw her coming out of the madam's room. So she framed Komomo for the crime. After Komomo's torture started, she went to the room where Komomo was kept and gave her water. But then she tightened the noose around Komomo's neck and killed her. The disfigured girl explains that she couldn't stand the kindness in Komomo's heart. She felt like that kind of purity had no place on the hell-like island. She believed that killing Komomo would send her to heaven, where she would suffer no more. Still, Christopher is adamant that the disfigured girl is hiding something. Right then, a raspy voice begins to speak, and tells the disfigured girl to tell him the truth. She twists and shakes, then finally says that she tells him her true story. This time, her mother and father were dirt-poor beggars. Her mother was an abortionist, and her father was a mean drunk, who beat her mother very often. When she was born, she was dumped in the river in front of their house. But she lasted two days, and her mother decided to let her leave. While growing up, she watched many women come to their hut to get their unborn fetuses aborted by her mother. She was always tasked to dump the fetus bodies to the river, and she began to believe that she'd go to hell for aiding her mother in committing a sin. The Buddhist monk who befriended her eventually molested her and scared her into obeying him by threatening that she would go to hell. Her alcoholic father abused her too, one night, she came up behind her father and hit him with a rock until he was dead. She then dumped his body in the river, and from that time on, a monstrous hand suddenly emerged from the side of her head. In the present, the monstrous hand is also emerging from the disfigured girl's head. On the palm of the hand is a pair of eyes and a set of teeth. She calls the monstrous hand her twin sister. Apparently, her mother and father were siblings, and when the people in their village found out about their incestuous relationship, they were forced to leave town and they became beggars later. What's more, only her mother knew about her monstrous hand. From then on, the hand whispered evil thoughts and compelled her to do bad things. The hand had also pushed her to kill their father and steal the madam's ring in the brothel. Therefore, the disfigured girl believed that this is why she was damned to spend eternity in hell. Right then, the monstrous hand begins to speak in Komomo's voice and taunts Christopher. She even knows he actually killed his sister in America, the darkest secret of his own. Apparently, the role of the disfigured girl and her monstrous hand in the film is mainly to remind Christopher of his committed sins, which might have been hidden by himself intentionally. This finally drives him crazy, so he grabs his pistol and shoots the disfigured girl. But she just cackles, and says that he cannot kill them. He shoots her in the head, and suddenly, the disfigured girl transforms into Komomo. She pulls out the brain matter gushing out of her bullet hole, and tells Christopher that she waited for him. She then collapses, and dies. Christopher is later put in prison for the disfigured girl's death. The guards remark that they will make his life a living hell. He grabs the measly prison ration and starts eating. But when he is about to drink from a pail, he sees that there's an aborted fetus inside. He cradles the pail and sings a lullaby to it. The movie ends with his sister's ghost and Komomo keeping Christopher company in his cell, ensuring that he is haunted by his sins forever in his living hell. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.